when we think about big power systems, some years ago, we started the idea of why we don't go and, and start to build it in a smaller scale. And uh, this uh, good idea led us to think also at the same time that we could build 100% renewable energy systems. Uh, when we talk about microgrids, there is not a clear definition because sometimes we think about big power uh, systems still could work as microgrid. So it could be like an island, it could be a city, it could be a region, it could be even a country. So it's difficult to put boundaries there. Uh, some other definitions like nanogrids has been uh, appear also, and they are always thinking more on a single building, let's say, more in the level of kilowatt. But again, it's hard to, to define. So instead of having this lack of definitions, I prefer to say that microgrid is like a philosophy. So our philosophy is we think that if we can generate, consume, and store the energy as closer as possible, then we have the microgrid concept. When you say as closer as possible, again, we don't have boundaries. So let's say that we are also thinking about energy production and consumption from inner to outside. So we don't expect that someone will come with electricity, I am able to generate my own electricity, I'm able to store it, I'm able to put it also it to my electric car, and I, I'm able to live my life with that. And the, it has a lot of advantages because we can reduce a lot of the losses, yeah? So uh, some of these concepts are uh, like you can see here, generation at the point of consumption and always available. That is the main concept. Then another interesting thing that I would like to also highlight is the eight S's of the microgrid uh, operation. Thanks to microgrid operation, we can gain stabilizing, stabilizing the grid and also stabilizing our own system, spin reserve, because we can give frequency regulation. The third S, STATCOM. We can work as a STATCOM, providing reactive power if needed. The fourth is seamless transition between islanded and green uh, connected states. So if we just are disconnected from the grid, we can resynchronize and we can reconnect. If we think that there's a fault or just the power quality is not good, we can just disconnect. The, the fifth S is the standalone operation or islanding operation in which you uh, fix yourself frequency and voltages. The sixth is smoothing, smoothing the power. And this means that, for instance, when I have a lot of solar uh, photovoltaics, uh, I have cloud passing. And this means that I have a lot of fluctuation of the power. I can smooth it. The seventh is the seventh S is shaving. It's not the same of smoothing. Let's say smoothing is, I have fluctuations and I just, I, I just smooth it to avoid uh, stability problems. Shaving is to avoid, we have a huge peak of productions. So we just shave the peaks and put it in another place. And when we say putting in another place, it's these other functions that we call shifting. So moving some energy, let's say, imagine that as, as I have here at home, I generate a lot of solar power. Still, my electric vehicle is not at home, so I have to store it. And then once I arrive, for instance, at night, then I can, I can uh, give it back to the EV. So this will be shifting. You can see that in these three last S, smoothing, shaving, and shifting, it's just a matter of how you size the energy storage system that you can achieve one, another, or the other. Yeah. So, of course, smoothing, you need smaller one, shaving, medium one, and for make 
huge amount of shifting energy you will need a bigger one. 